The ball's movement won't change in this episode, but I'm going to modify the code. I will create a ball class, then I can instantiate ball objects, and the ball objects will have properties and methods, and I will be using those a lot during the rest of the tutorial. I want several balls on the canvas to collide with each other, but now if I want to get just one more, I would need to create two new variables here, the new coordinates, and I would need to call the drawball function here below with those new values. And also if I want this second ball to move differently, like faster or slower than the first one, I would need to create a new move function which describes the second ball's movement. And then later, when every ball will have a different velocity, acceleration, mass and so on, it would get even more complicated. So to make the code more organized and easier to understand, I'm going to use object-oriented programming and create a ball class with properties and methods to define the actions that the ball can do that will serve as a template for the ball objects that I can then instantiate and those objects will be the actual individual balls. So I create the class using the class keyword. I call it ball and the first method will be constructor, which is a special method that's always called when an instance of the ball class is created. I need three parameters for that, the same three that I needed for the drawball function, the coordinates and the radius. And the object's own properties will get the values of these three parameters. And I can give the values to the properties by using the this keyword, which simply refers to the current instance of the object. So the X property of the ball object will get the value of the x argument and so on. The ball class will also have a drawable method which works the same way as the drawable function does. It draws a ball on the canvas. So I'm putting it inside of the ball class but once they are there I don't need the function keyword anymore because the drawable is not a function but a method of the ball object. And I also don't need these three arguments because the values of them are the properties of the ball object. So I use the this keyword when I'm using the x, y and the r. And now I can, I don't need these variables and I can go down and I can instantiate the ball object. The way I'm doing that is I'm creating a new variable called ball1 and the value of that will be a ball class and I need to provide the three arguments which will be the properties of the ball1 object and in the main loop instead of calling the drawball function I'm calling the drawball method of the ball1 object and one more thing I need to change is, since I don't have the x and the y variables in the global scope anymore, I also need to use the properties of the object here. And I can see that even if I changed the code, the ball still moves in the same way. If I want to create one more ball, then all I need to do is instantiating another ball object with different properties and I need to call the drawball method of that new object in the main loop. Here you go. If I want to control the second ball instead of the first one then I have to go to the move function and replace the ball once to ball twos and in that case 
if I press the arrow keys then the second ball will move instead of the first one. But if I don't want to keep changing those lines all the time I can also create a function called key control which will take a ball object as an argument and I will refer to that as a B and I put all these lines instead of the key control function I don't need the move function anymore just the part inside and then instead of ball 2 I will call the I will use the properties of whatever ball has been passed into the key control function and I can go to the main loop and call the key control function using the ball 1 as an argument then I can move the first ball and if I use the ball 2 as an argument then I can move the second ball with the arrow keys. Now there are two balls on the canvas and I have two lines in the main loop calling the draw ball method and if I had 100 balls on the canvas then I would need 100 lines in the main loop calling the draw ball methods. Instead of that I'm going to create an array where I'm going to store all the balls that have been created before and iterate through them in the main loop. So I create a constant variable called balls which will start as an empty array. Let me just put it here instead. And then I go to the constructor of the ball class and tell here that every time a ball is instantiated it will get pushed immediately into the balls array. I can do that because I'm not making a copy of the object I'm just assign a reference to it. So if I have a ball object called B and that happens to be the first or second element of the balls array then I can reference to the properties of the same object using the B expression or using this balls1 expression they refer to the same ball object. As for iterating through the array I'm going here and I create a for each loop and I use an arrow function and I will call the drawball method for each of the ball objects that are inside of the balls array. Here still everything works the same. And something about changing which ball can I control. Instead of changing the argument in the key control function in the main loop, I can create a new property inside of the ball class that I will call player and set to false as default. And after instantiating an object, I can set the property to true. Then I go to the for each loop and I can say here that if the player property of the current ball object is true then I want to call the key control function as the current ball object as the argument. And now if I change the player property of the second ball to true then I can control that one and if I really want to I can set both of those properties to true. In that case the two balls will move simultaneously. So this ball class that I created 
that's really important. The code of the next few episodes will be based on it. And except for that ball class, I have the key control function and the main loop. Right now, those are the three main building blocks of my code. And in the next episode, I will be introducing velocity and acceleration.